Chapter 7, Garces Trino took the long way to get home. His mind was mostly on Lissana, a little on her friends. Sometimes Montoya's poetry words, or memories of Roscoe's threat. Trino used to think he had the most boring life in the world. The last two days had been just crazy, man. Just crazy. Man, all the stuff going on, stuff he got sucked into by accident. He just have to be careful. It was like walking through a field of cactus. Tomorrow was school. Could mean maybe he'd see Lisana. He'd see Zipper and Rogelio too. What would he say? Couldn't tell them about Rasca and Epifano. Couldn't tell them about the bookstore or listening to Montoya. It'd be the same old stuff with the guys laughing at the weirdo kids, trying to pop the snack machine when the teachers weren't looking, or just sitting someplace and chewing on the grass. Trino wasn't sure about his old boring life. He hated the problems with Raska. But taking with the other boys today, but talking with the other boys today, listening to some of the stories that Montoya had told in his poems, and getting to know a girl like Lasana had put something new into his life. He wasn't ready to let it go. He reached into the back pocket of his blue jeans and pulled Montoya's book out. He read again the words that Montoya had written just for Trino's sake. Don't let the man flip the switch and fry you. Without realizing it, Trino's head nodded in agreement. Trino heard his mother yelling, coming through the torn screen door, long before he climbed the step up. She sounded really mad. At least she couldn't blame Trino for whatever it was. He opened the screen door and quietly stepped inside, slipping behind his mother who stood beside the kitchen table, jabbing her arms around as she spoke in loud, angry words. He noticed the white boxes she had brought back from the motel, open and empty on the table. Trino's eyebrows raised up, who had eaten up all that food. Of course he knew, and looked up to see Garces sweating on the sofa. The man still had smears of chocolate icing on one of his unshaven cheeks. His dingy undershirt had the look of an old dish rag that he'd wipe his dirty fingers all over. He didn't seem to be talking much as Trino's mom yelled at him. I brought that food home for the kids, Garces. You ate it all. They didn't even leave a few sandwiches for their supper. How could you be such a pig? Garces just sighed, his reddened eyes looking like two shriveled tomatoes. Calmate, prima. A man has to eat. What man? She spit out her words like something hot burned her tongue. All I see is a fat drunk who's been sleeping on my sofa, but doing nothing to help his family get a little food on the table. I want you out of here, Garces, right now. She pointed her arm towards the door. Get your clothes and get out of my house. You can't tell me to go, prima. We're family. Mom said you have to go, Garces. Now get out, Trino had watched in silence. But now that his mother had spoken the words, Trino had waited two months to hear. He wanted to be certain Garces left before his mother changed her mind and decided to give him another chance. Stay out of this, boy. It ain't your business. His brown face flamed with a red tone that made him look slightly more dangerous. Only as he tried to stand, his fat legs were unsteady beneath him. He fell back into the sofa with a groan and a burp. Trino's here to help me throw you out, and if you won't leave, I'll call the police, Garces, and tell them that you stole money from me. Then she turned to her son. Go get his clothes from the back room. I'll get a bag for them, she said. Trino wasted no time in finding the few torn pants and shirts that Garces kept on the closet floor in the small bedroom Trino shared with his brothers. He was glad to get the sweaty smell of Garces out for good. As he returned to the living room with the clothes in his arms, Trino was ready to take on Garces himself. Trino had the strength to tilt a soda machine on its side to make it pay off. He knew he could shove Garces out the door if he had to. 
I was going to share my check with you, prima. Now you'll get nothing, nada, nada. Surprisingly, Garces was already on his feet and heading towards the door. Trino's mother muttered Spanish curses as she took Garces's clothes and shoved them into a black trash bag. She, twi she twisted the bag closed, then pushed it into the man's hands. Don't come back, Garces. I'll tell them a bunch of stuff so you'll go to jail. Hear me? Don't come back. I won't come back. When my check comes, I'll lift the high life, prima. You and your boys had a chance for it too. Too bad. As the fat man shifted himself through the trailer door, Trino felt like pushing his shoe against the man's behind to get him out faster. Instead, Trino enjoyed the sound as the door slammed. He smiled as he watched Garces stumble over the gravel in the parking lot of the trailer park as he made his way out. Ay, ay, ay! Now, what I'll do for supper? His mother expressed a loud sigh, and Trino turned to see her sink into one of the kitchen chairs. <sniffs> Leaning her elbow onto the tabletop, she rubbed her forehead with her hand. Suddenly, Trino realized how quiet the place was. Where are Beto and Gus? He asked his mother and, without thinking about it, started to pick up the empty white boxes on the table. Nick took them to the ice house for a soda. He said he'd get them out of my hair so I could do a few things around here. Garces ruined everything. I was going to ask Nick to eat with us. <laughs> Trino crunched a box in his hands. Who was this Nick guy anyway? Another Garces? to sponge free food off of them. We have nothing for us. Tell that guy to eat someplace else. <laughs> he grabbed the other boxes, twisted them up, and shoved everything deep into the plastic tra trash can by the stove. When he turned around, Trino saw something that made his skin turn cold. His mother's fingers were rubbing through tears coming down her face. Trino had never seen his mother cry. She yelled, she cursed, she hit, she gave the meanest ojo in the barrio, but through every bad thing that ever had happened, she had never cried. Why now? <laughs> Trino stood there feeling like an idiot because he didn't know what to say or do for his mother. Her thin shoulders shook. She seemed to stare at some invisible spot on the table as the tears continued. He wondered what she was Thinking, her face looked so sad. He had always known what to do when she yelled or tried to slap him. Run out the door as fast as you can. Rather than trying to run away, Trino felt a desire to step closer to his mother. If only he knew what to say or what to do. Maybe get her a glass of water. If only to make her, to make his feet move and give his hand something to do. As he set the glass of water upon the table, his mother set her damp hand upon Trino's wrist. Trino almost jumped. Thank you, mijo. She now squeezed his wrist firmly. You okay, ma? Trino could barely hear his own scratchy voice. He's been such a good friend to me. Now he's leaving. Who's leaving? Trino asked, fearing his mother was talking about Garces. Nick, he found a new job. He won't be working at the motel anymore. His mother released Trino's hand to pick up the glass of water. She took a little sip, then set the glass down. I've never known a man like him. He's very kind. He always thinks of others before himself. Trino frowned. Why is everything so crazy and confusing today? The old familiar urge to run away tempted him, but he couldn't. Instead, Trino sat down in the chair across from his mother. She raised her eyes to meet her son's. Tears and black mascara smeared together under her eyes. I'm glad Garces is gone. He should have left a long time ago, she said. Trino felt relieved she had gone to a subject he could talk about. Garces was a bum. He sure was. But he's family. I felt I should take him in. Her eyes started to dry as she talked to Trino. He was your father's cousin. Your father once told me Garces had saved his life. I thought I should repay him. 
Trito shrugged his shoulders together. Her story explained a lot, but Trito didn't care much for either man. He had known his father and Garces had no qualities to respect. He stiffened when his mother slid a finger under his chin. You look like your father. You walk like him too. She smiled a bit, but her brown eyes were still sad. But you are not what he was. He always picked a fight. When I married him, I thought he was brave. When he died so soon after, I decided he wasn't. She gave out a sigh and then stood up. It was more than, ever, than she had ever told Trino about his father. More than he really wanted to know. The man had disappointed Trino's mother. And it didn't take a real smart guy to see that things didn't get much better with the other men who came along and left her with Felix, Beto, and Gus. The loud, crunching tires on gravel made Trino stop thinking about his mother's problems and get up from the table. He looked out the screen door. Nick's old car was now parked by the trailer. Visualized? He got out to let Beto and Gus free of their seat belts in the back seat. Mama, look what Nick bought us. Beto's black eyes shone with excitement as he ran through the door. See my new cars? Look, look. Gus followed him, holding a green truck in each hand. See, Mama? See? Tuck, tuck. Both little boys waved their new toys at their mother, then went to the carpet to roll them around, making noises like car engines and crashing noises as the vehicles flipped over. Trino was torn between a happiness for his little brothers and a sudden resentment at the tall, dark-skinned man coming into the trailer carrying a brown shopping bag in his arms. You made my mother cry. Not even my father ever did that. Nick, you shouldn't have bought the boys. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have bought the toys. It's too much. You gave us a ride and bought us pizza at the mall. Despite what she said, Trino saw a shine in his mother's eyes. It was just like the one that showed his brothers were excited about their new toys. And what's in that bag, Nick? She asked. Well, that barbecue place across from the ice house smells so good. I just had to buy some sausages and ribs. Got enough here to feed me and three hungry boys. What do you say, Maria? Nick looked down with a smile as his long arms held out the bag to her. Trino's head battled with his stomach. He didn't want Nick around to make his mom feel sad, but those sausages and ribs smell better than anything Trino had eaten in weeks. It'll be nice to have supper with a friend, his mother told Nick. The man seemed to like to talk a lot as they all ate the juicy meat, baked beans, bread, and coleslaw. Nick had lots of stories that made Gus and Beto laugh, and his mother too. Trino was just glad Nick had brought the barbecue. Later, he had wanted to look out the window when his mother walked outside with Nick. She stayed out there with him a long time. Beto and Gus were already asleep. So was Felix, who had come back from his father with five dollars in his pocket, but no money for their mother. Trino would have slept on the sofa, but Garces' smell had remained behind. How long would the sofa stink? Sleeping with Beto was a wrestling match, but the boy smelled better. Through the open window of the small bedroom, Trino heard his mother's soft voice and Nick's deep one. It was those long silences in between that made Trino feel uneasy and sad. But I still wouldn't write a poem about it, he thought just before he fell asleep.